Uh, Mr. Bigelow, so can you tell us about the response? The deadline came Sunday. Uh, what was the response? Are you pleased with what happened? Uh, we're very pleased. We had about a thousand emails over that weekend just prior to, to the Sunday's close. And uh, so we have had enormous positive response and applications and a lot of really good applicants where um, it's gonna be a real job for the judges to try to pick out only three uh, winners, you know, a first place, second place, and third place. And um, altogether, those amounts were 500,000 for first, 300,000 for, for second, and 150,000 for first for $950,000 total, total winnings. And I got to thinking that it's awfully challenging for the judges to try to compact out of all of the good applications we have, who are going to probably produce really good essays into just three, making three choices. Um, you know, I initially was kidding to people, gee, I hope we have at least three applicants, right? Well, we have a lot more than that. And so uh, what I decided was to create another 11 winners and each of those 11 would win $50,000. So we have altogether 14 potential uh, winners in the in the contest, and it's going to give the the essay uh, uh, authors more opportunities to win than they did have. And so it's worth their trouble and worth their while to do good essays. And so we want them to know that that uh, now the field is much more broad for winning the uh, the prizes. And uh, so altogether, it's a million and a half dollars, one million five hundred thousand, that uh, are, is going to be awarded to all the winners. It it encourages people to go ahead and now that they've applied and made the cut, to go ahead and write the, the essay, right? Yeah, it's worth the effort now. I mean, it wasn't. It's not as though it wasn't worth the effort before, but at least now we're we're in, embracing uh, the opportunity for eleven more people to win uh, instead of just three. So now we have a total of 14 opportunities. Can you talk about, you said you had so many great applicants, you're still going through them. You're still processing a bunch of the applications that came we in, are, right? We are, but they're gonna be, uh, we'll be finished this week in uh, processing them. So by Thursday, uh, we'll, by the end of Thursday, actually, we, we expect to be able to have categorized them and, uh, and to process them. And uh, so they will be the, the the contestants or the applicants who are going to be uh, allowed into the competition will have been notified uh, this week or next week. By the end of next week, surely they will have been notified that uh, their application has been accepted. You said you had so many quality applications. Can you sort of describe the scope of that, where they came from? Or were there any surprises about where they came from? We have somebody on death row who is an applicant. We have a detective from Mexico who has been solving murders, many murders, by communicating, he says, with the other side through mediums and solving his crimes. He's a detective. So we have the full bandwidth of, of people who are also researchers and have been researchers in this field for most of their lives, for many decades. So it, it runs the gamut of, of, of applicants that uh, from one end to the other, that, you know. I know you were hoping for Southeast Asia, India, China, Tibet, because those cultures have considered this yes. uh, with a more open mind than maybe Western culture. Yes, we have applications from all over the world. This is truly an international contest. South America? South America as well, yes, particularly Brazil, yes. Um, and you said they're quality, meaning uh, uh, academics who have done this kind of research? Are there any surprises in that people uh, academics who were working on this that you didn't know about? So it's essentially going to be people who have are been professional researchers they're, they're all during their lives. It could be people who are practitioners in religion. It could be priests, ministers, rabbis, uh, whatever, and uh, people who have had unique experiences. It could be people who have been filmmakers and documentary folks who, who have recorded uh, who are essentially our ghostbusters, and they have recorded a lot of terrific things, you know, in the process of pursuing pursuing that kind of that field. And you could call them researchers, researchers certainly of a certain category, a certain type, just because they're in in the field of entertainment. I wouldn't say, well, they haven't been exposed to to things in a way that that they're trying to entertain by finding and presenting uh, verifiably 
uh, events that are very paranormal in this kind of, of area, you know, in terms of, of looking for ghosts and trying to, to uh, understand uh, that this, uh, there's some kind of consciousness maybe going on here in some way. So we're not trying to, to close the doors and saying, well, you're, you don't have a background, but we have to say you have to have enough of a background that you've been doing this for enough of a time, long enough time, perhaps five years or more. And uh, so we have rules and regulations on our, that are described on our website. So um, we're, we're trying to be as fair as we can. It's flexible and democratic. You don't have to have a double PhD to enter the contest. Exactly. No, you don't. I, I know that speaking to you privately, that you had shared with me the idea that you've been flooded with personal notes, uh, testaments from people who've written you passionate letters. What's that been like? Well, I'm going to be offering actually a letter next week that is a personal letter uh, that I'll post on our website that is to thank all of the applicants, thank all the people who who are friends and who are providing advice and, and so on. And I have been getting letters at the office and at home and from a lot of people. And uh, they're pouring out their hearts in, in, uh, in describing their own personal uh, things that have happened to them, why they are convinced that the other side exists. And uh, they, they, they pour out their hearts. And so my letter is going to be trying to explain that this contest and this effort isn't about whether or not I don't have personal uh, opinions. I do have personal opinions. And uh, my personal opinion is that the other side does exist. And I've had that for decades. So it's not that. What we're trying to do is create an opportunity to stimulate debate and interest and dialogue, and also to put on our website, perhaps uh, all the, the winning essays, in addition to maybe runners up that didn't win anything, but runner up essays, and uh, be able to have maybe uh, two dozen or more, who knows, all in one website for people to see really solid arguments to where, where people who are good researchers, and they're gonna be, a, they're gonna be trying to say that the other side does exist from different kinds of aspects and show different kinds of proof. And maybe some of that's really gonna resonate with folks, maybe it won't, because it's not as though we're, we're trying to, to change everybody's mind, we're not. We're trying to say, this is a, a body of information from diverse kinds of people in research and, and so on that is going to try to be as unbiased as possible, uh, not getting religion into things, because we've tried to make that clear. You know, don't be quoting scripture because anybody can do that. It's trying to say, come up with something more, something more concrete that people is, that is more tangible for folks to actually get a hold of. And then, uh, so I think we're going to be doing a public service. I know that you wanted to stimulate debate, get people talking, elevate the level of discussion about the afterlife, the subject. Uh, and it sounds like you've already done that even before you see the essays. Could you anticipate ever doing this again, another contest? We have to cross, cross that bridge. <clears throat> we, have, we have now a period of time for five months until on the 1st of August that the applicants, the time has been cut off the 1st of the 28th of February. And that was the, the time that they needed to have their applications in. <clears throat> so now they know there are 14 awards that are going to be made uh, once the judges judge everything after the 1st of August. All the essays need to be completed. By that's the deadline. Some of these essays have more than one author. So there may be two, three, or four, or five people getting together as a group to do an essay, <clears throat> no longer than 25,000 words. And so there's plenty of time here for people to write and, and do a good job of, of writing what they're, what they're trying to present as their case, their case, right? So, so um, and then the judges have <clears throat> three months, August, September, and October. And we have six judges now. We added one more, which was really good that the person's tremendously qualified. And <clears throat> we feel that this is going to make the judges more able to handle the volume of judging, the volume of material that has to be read and, and poured over by them. And so then by the 1st of November, we'll know who all these winners are, all the 14 winners. And um, we'll make a big announcement. You know, we're going to invite them to, to maybe, you know, be on your show, George, and, uh, and describe to everybody in the world as to how did they come to these conclusions? You know, why do they feel that they're, that they're right in what they're presenting? And so this dialogue may continue on 
after November 1st, you know, and maybe in, in December and on into 2022, because of these, the, 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 the ability of these people to, to be on various programs and shows and describe uh, what, how they came to their conclusions. I know that you mentioned about the all the letters, personal letters you're getting, people pouring their hearts out to you about their own experiences uh, and their beliefs. Right. You're not the judge. You're not making the oh, decision. Though. No, I'm glad I'm not. And I'm glad our staff is not. Our staff here at Bix, we 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 have hands off of any, of any of that. These judges are are going to be completely on their own to to communicate among each other, among themselves, and um, um, and and so the the uh, the instruction is from from our side from from management of Bix is just look um, use good common sense <clears throat> uh, use the the uh, beyond a reasonable doubt metric of the Western court system, because that's enough to convict. Uh, you know, they can say, yes, if I, I'm beyond a reasonable doubt, doesn't mean, mean you have to be 100% convinced. It's not beyond a reasonable doubt says reasonable. 100% is not reasonable. So you don't have to reach 100% you know, con convinced, uh, conviction on that. Um, and that uh, witnesses matter. If you have a story that involves it matters as to who the witnesses are, how many witnesses were there, you know, that, that matters. And that's very important in trying to convince a, a jury of, of uh, observers that, that what you're presenting is, is pretty, darn, pretty darn correct and accurate and true. Would we be right in guessing that uh, a lot of big names known for near-death experiences, books about the afterlife, research, academic or otherwise, have applied? I have not, for this very reason, I have not stuck my nose and face into all the applications at all. Uh, what I told you about the two individuals in the beginning of the, your program here was, was told to me by a senior staff member. So I have not read anything at, at all to do with who has applied, you know, and uh, so I, I've, I've been hands off on that.